Hey everybody, um, I recently painted this Assyria uh, for War Machine and I got a number of questions about how I did the base. And this is really just a faux marble painting uh, over a wooden dowel. So I'm going to go through real quick how I did it and uh, hopefully you'll be able to follow along and uh, duplicate the process for yourself. Uh, first thing I should mention that uh, it's always good to get reference. I actually grabbed some, uh, or I went and looked at a bunch of pictures online um, of various types of marble. And this particular one uh, I chose because I thought the colors went well with the miniature itself. So, uh, and I kind of got lucky with the colors that I had what I needed to do it. So, the first thing I did, obviously, was to uh, spray coat the, uh, the spool, it's just a wooden spool, uh, black. And now, if you wanted to make a really nice finish, you'd probably want to spray it, sand it, spray it again, sand it again, and maybe spray it one more time. Well, definitely spray it one more time. Um, I'm not going to do that. Uh, for the purpose of this demonstration, I just want to show you the paint. So uh, my first color uh, after the base black is going to be uh, Joe Sonia uh, Hooker's Green. And I'm going to be applying it with a natural sea sponge. So uh, I just get some on my sponge and knock a little bit of it off. This sponge is also a little damp too. Uh, and then I'm just going to really try to just cover it. Uh, I'm not going to try to make uh, the spool perfectly green. Uh, I'm going to just try to make sure that I get a, a really decent covering of the green. But I do want some black to show through. Uh, this whole process is about creating layers of color um, to make depth. Just like most of the time when you're painting, you're trying to kind of force depth onto your surface. All right, so then uh, I'm gonna mix in a little white with the green and lighten it up and do another shade. But this one I'm going to try and be a little bit more uh, not so thorough. I got some white on there. Need to get that off. There we go. I can always blend that back anyway. There's a certain amount of <clears throat> randomness to the color, so having uh, splotches of uh, you know a bright white. <clears throat> well, it's not exactly bright, but you know what I mean. You know, it, it doesn't all have to be uniform. In fact, it's better if it's not. So I'm going to go ahead and, and actually add in some of that white that I have on my sponge. And then blend it out. And I'll put some more green back on there. Uh, oh, and then try and get rid of those fingerprints. I'm really kind of forcing the speed on this. Luckily, this is a really, this process is very easy to correct your mistakes. There are no mistakes, there are only happy accidents. That's what I heard anyway. So the more you uh, take it back and forth uh, from dark to light, the more uh, depth 
your color is going to have. Uh, I'm sure there is a point of diminishing returns on that. But, you know, four or five different layers will probably work out just fine for you. I've decided that I'm just going to continue using the uh, excess white on the sponge. You don't want anything that you do to be too regular. If it's going to look natural, it needs to be random. All right, now I'm gonna let that dry and uh, then we'll come back to it. All right, so this next part would have been easier if I'd actually gone ahead and uh, sanded and finished the wood. Uh, as it is now, it's kind of porous, so this isn't gonna work quite as well as it did on my original piece. Uh, and I apologize for that, but you should still get the gist of what's going on. Uh, so now I'm creating a very transparent um, layer of uh, the mixture of white and hooker's green using um, Liquitex airbrush thinner which I keep in a handy little bottle uh, and what I'm going to do now is uh, veining and I'm just going to do essentially like little cracks and I don't want them to be too too strong so as I go through here I'm, I'm just gonna pat them down with my finger here and blend them out and think of it as doing like lightning right it's uh, it's a very broken line it has to have kind of a random pattern to it and then you can break that line off like again like lightning that's veins in the rock. I know nothing about marble and why it creates these patterns. All I know how to do is to fake how it looks. But I would recommend getting some photo reference and really seeing uh, what this stuff looks like. Now I'm holding my brush way at the back here because it actually provides less control which is what I want right now. Because if I have more control I think it's going to be too uh, too regular and too even. I kind of want the brush to wander a little bit. And that helps create that random effect that I'm looking for. But anyway, I think you get the idea. Um, 
when I was finished with this one, I gave it a nice clear gloss finish. Uh, and I think that really helps the effect. It also kind of helps bring the color out in it too. Um, but this is only really one kind of pattern. There are certainly different kinds of marble and different ways of approaching it. But I figured I would just show you the way that I did this particular piece. And I hope you found that useful. And thank you all for watching.